Oh, Tim, just take my money. Take it. Just take it. Take my wallet. So, Apple just shocked us with their scary fast Halloween themed event. Now I'm just sad I didn't get to see Tim Cook dressed as a werewolf or something. Anyhow, we have a lot to talk about with Apple's new Mac announcements. Apple announced a new family of M series chips, a new iMac, and updates to the MacBook Pros as well. Mostly internal, but one aesthetic upgrade as well that I've been waiting for literally my whole life, ever since Apple discontinued those polycarbonate plastic looking MacBook Pros back in the day in the 2000s. But no doubt the question on everybody's mind, are these updates actually big enough for me to upgrade? Well, let's talk about it. Now, we all know that Apple's Mac lineup hasn't exactly been selling like hotcakes recently, but there's good reason for that. Most of us took the opportunity to upgrade when Apple transitioned to Apple Silicon for the first time, M1. And those first gen Apple Silicon Macs were just incredible. A huge improvement over Intel based Macs, and I'm still using mine today. And it still feels brand new and it's lightning fast. And it's not choked on me once. I use it to make music at home and YouTube videos. Shameless plug, new single is out in two weeks by the way, pre-save link in bio. Even MKBHD still uses his M1 Max MacBook Pro and you'd expect him to always be on the latest tech. I mean, he's literally said in his recent reaction video for the new M3s that he doesn't really feel the need to upgrade from his M1 Max. Now, the M1 announcements did change the game. We all know this. But since then, upgrades have stabilized and subsequent updates to the Mac after Apple moved to their own silicon have been incremental, as you'd expect really. Switching to their own silicon was like the big spike in the graph and now it's all about those little refinements, you know, the little speed improvements here and there. So who exactly are these new Macs for and in what scenario would an upgrade make sense? So Apple announced a new family of M series chips, the M3, the M3 Pro and M3 Max, all now based based on a 3 nanometer process, just like we saw with the new A17 Pro chip in the iPhone 15s. Now, Apple said that the biggest advancement in these M3 chips is actually the GPU performance. I mean, Apple's calling it the largest leap forward in graphics processing since they moved to Apple Silicon. Now, there are some minor new features that we've not seen before that come with these new chips, things like dynamic caching for GPU and hardware accelerated ray tracing. But these new features don't really mean a lot to most people, and other tech YouTubers will cover this stuff in way more detail than me. Now, for me especially as a home studio musician and part-time YouTuber content creator, thing I'm really interested in is the comparison Apple's made with the M3 chip performance with the M1, which from the graphs Apple showed on screen looks fairly impressive. I think what they're trying to say with these graphs here is that if you already own an M1 Mac, then you might want to consider upgrading because some of these updates are pretty big. I mean, up to 50% faster in just two years is pretty astonishing. That said, what Apple didn't really touch on is that when you compare the M3 performance to the M2 performance, we're talking marginal gains in the 10 to 15% range so not really noteworthy. Now, if we look at the configurations listed on Apple's website, there is a clear theme for these new machines because the upgrades in the Pro Series chips are actually quite minimal. And as a result, the prices are pretty much the same as last year. But the upgrades to the Max chips are pretty hefty with up to 50% better GPU performance. And so naturally to access the performance of these brand new Max chips, you do have to pay a bit more than last year. Although for most people, it's just overkill. Okay, so the new MacBook Pro. Apple is raising the bar yet again, as if it wasn't already good enough. So beginning with the base model, and we do have a new base model this year, because yes, Apple has finally discontinued the 13 inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar. Glad to see the back of that, to be honest. RIP, RIP Touch Bar. This model has now been replaced with a brand new 14 inch model, which has the M3 chip and starts at just 1599 US dollars, or 1699 here in the UK, which is a great deal when you consider that you're getting the brand new M3 chip, but you're also getting the new design, the better battery life, better keyboard, better display with mini LED for only about $200 more. Peripherals wise, it is worth noting that you do lose a USB-C port when you go for this base model, but for most people, I doubt you'll even notice the difference. Interesting though, that we haven't seen a price adjustment for the whole lineup in Europe like we've seen with the iPhone this year. We actually received a price decrease for the first time ever here in the UK, but the Mac is still way more expensive here in Europe than it is in the US for some reason. Just worth pointing out, that's still the case. 
The new MacBook Pros also sport the M3 Pro and M3 Max chips. Apple claimed that the new M3 Pro is up to 40% faster than the M1 Pro in the 16-inch MacBook Pro. That's a lot of pros. And that the M3 Max is up to two and a half times faster than the M1 Max. That's pretty significant gains in just two years. And that will be amazing for like video editors and creators like myself. These new machines also support up to 128 gigabytes of unified memory, which is pretty absurd for a laptop. I kind of feel like the desktop form factor is becoming more and more redundant by the day these days. And the battery life looks to be benefiting from that three nanometer architecture as well with 22 hours. So for anybody on an Intel machine, just buy this. It's a huge upgrade and you won't be disappointed. Hardware wise, there are two main changes to note. The first is a 20% brighter display at 600 nits to make it consistent with the Pro Display XDR. And the second is something I was straight up not expecting at all brand new space black color that has apparently been treated to reduce fingerprints. Now we all know how much of a fingerprint magnet that midnight colored MacBook Air was. So it'll definitely be interesting to see how this new color holds up. Now it does look pretty tasty, I'll give it that. And it is kind of making me want a brand new MacBook really badly. Space black is the ultimate pro color and Apple knows it. Worth pointing out that this actually replaces the old space gray color on the new Mac lineup. But what is strange is if you look at Apple's website, the regular M3 models still come with the old space gray color. You actually have to go with a model that has an M3 Pro chip or higher to get access to the space black color. Such an Apple thing to do. Apple also updated the iMac and all of these updates are internal with the M3 chip now in the new iMac. So unfortunately, the colors do stay the same this year. So does the display. And what's most disappointing about the new iMac is that the peripherals are also the same this year. No USB-C, we're still on lightning with the iMac. Why Apple, why? Why couldn't they have just updated it to fit with the rest of the lineup? I don't get it. Who knows what Apple are thinking? So the age old question, should you upgrade? Well, it's a fairly simple one for me. If you're still on an Intel based machine, then go buy the new MacBook Pro because it's just great. But if you're already on an Apple Silicon machine, i.e. M1 or M2, then there is really no need to upgrade unless you plan to do something super crazy with your machine. But for the everyday home studio musician, YouTuber, content creator, hobbyist, those kind of people, you just don't need the latest and greatest model. I mean, the M1 Pro MacBook Pro 16 inch that I purchased just a few years ago is honestly still overkill for most of the things that I do. It's probably the best purchase I've ever made and it's easily the best tech product I've ever owned. So honestly, no need to upgrade. One thing that is worth noting though is that the M2 series MacBook Pros will be a lot cheaper now and I would bet good money on some refurbished models entering the market over the next couple of weeks. So be sure to keep an eye out. I reckon there'll be some tasty deals appearing online over the next couple of weeks. I do have one final nugget though, and I'm not sure if many people watching the keynote actually realize this, but during the end screen at the end of the event, there was some text that appeared on the bottom of the screen below the Apple logo. And it said that the event was shot on the iPhone 15 Pro Max and edited on a MacBook. Now that is straight up so impressive. And yes, yes, I know what you're gonna say. Apple had the best lighting, the most talented production people to put it together, etc, etc. But still, the production quality in that keynote is something worth taking note of. And the fact that it was all shot on the iPhone 15 Pro Max blows my mind. I cannot wait to get mine. It's just the perfect phone for creators. Keep watching for a link to a video I made that explains that in a bit more detail if you're interested. Do let me know in the comments below if you'll be upgrading this year and why. Let me know what configuration you'd actually go for. I'm not gonna lie, Space Black is actually so tempting but i will need to exercise some much needed self-control here because they are not cheap do hit that like button to show your support if you enjoyed the video a subscribe to the channel would be hugely appreciated and if you are interested in watching some more of my other videos including which macbook you should buy for music production then here are a few links to some videos that you might want to watch next thank you ever so much for watching and i hope to see you in the next one bye for now